Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and this time one of my favorite openings with black the Knights of Defense. Specifically in Blitz and Rapid games you can surprise your opponents very easily as not many players know the main lines and especially not the side variations that I want to share here. I find them very effective. I want to share it with you guys to crush your opponents with black against e4. Let's jump into the opening. This is a setup e4, knight c6 as you see. And the main move that most of the player will play here is very tempting. This is one of the reasons you provoke the white to kind of controlling the center, but then you maneuvering your knight like a tango, like here and here, you will see next, and developing a pressure on the center in return. So I will be suggesting e5, but the main line here of knights of each is d5. And the main idea is to provoke the white to, to, to move forward here with the pawn, and then you have a nice structure of moving the bishop here, and the idea of developing the knight to here, and then to this square. And you have a very solid position. I don't want to deal with this one because I focus on different variation I find more effective. So this is the main line, you have a lot of information about this online. Let's go back to the previous one. e5, let's say it takes, and then he has two options, f, knight f3, but let's first cover the, the more obvious and the moves that most of the player will play online against you, f4. Now you could do the original setup of the knight of each knight g6 with the idea of but in this particular variation it's better to run away back to c6. You have a very uh, interesting variation and slightly better position. Let's say uh, he want to prevent you from conquering this strong diagonal with the black squares with your bishop and he moved bishop to e3 right preventing you now you have this strong move d5 if he takes then you have the idea of knight b4 attacking here but more importantly want to retrieve your uh, pawn over there and now let's say you want to protect the pawn you have the nice idea of queen e7 pinning his bishop to the king and yeah again you see his dark swells are very weak and now let's say you just want to protect then you return your material by just taking there and you got your pawn back and his you know this isolated pawn is very weak and you're totally fine here even slightly better even more than slightly let's see let's say you do something like that so yeah you keep your pressure with the bishop and it can't castle in the queen side now because of the queen and you are attempting to do check here and a lot of mess Now let's say he doesn't want to protect with his queen, but rather with his king. This is also possible, right? Now you have again this move, or from here or from there. I think from here is a bit better, because here you have the both attempts to come over there and do a check, double check with attacking on the bishop and taking the piece or coming from there so yeah for that at least if he does a3 then you come from here and if he doesn't do a3 you come from here which is even more powerful you come from here nice very nice idea he's doing very bad and let's say he moves back 
And then yeah, you see the position. Now you can do check. And yeah, you can exchange. And you have many different options. You can also keep the pressure with C6 to exchange this pawn and keep with the development after the exchange. Castle in the queen side. Yeah, well, you have a lot of options. And you're totally fine and even better. Now let's say he doesn't take with a pawn but he can take with a queen. Then you just trade queens and you have the same idea. Attacking both this pawn and this pawn with the forking idea. And you are doing very good as this isolated pawn stuck in the middle and you are totally fine. And <clears throat> finally let's see what happens if you move e5. Then you have d4 d4, he can't take because you are have double protection on this pawn. Let's say he run away and you have a very decent uh, position over here. You can play, uh, develop your knight over there and bring it in a tango maneuver to here attacking this weak pawn. Or moving it to the f5 square with the idea of putting it here and then if he uh, exchange uh, minor pieces you are doing fine after castling of course and protecting your queen with a uh, rook so your position is totally uh, fine and even slightly better okay so another option for black is instead of f4 knight f3 uh, which is more solid variation and in this case fine we just exchange knights and then put our queen in f6 now white need to uh, know whether to exchange the queens and then you're totally fine here while it's boring position you, are, you your position is quite good because you have this diagonal and yeah, you're attempting to take here, for example. Now, making a uh, pressure in the e4, let's say d5, and simply takes. And your position is okay. He can't castle short, by the way, but he can't castle here. So your position is even slightly better according to the uh, evaluation bar. Now let's say white will not exchange queens as you suggest, and rather will pick to move to g3, for example, to develop some attack, you know, as white you always want to, to maintain some um, attacking opportunities. Queen g3 attempting to take here, and then you block it, you don't want just to put your uh, bishop uh, in this traditional uh, square because you want to protect this spot. Now his queen is under attack, so let's say f4 with the forking attempt with, D5, with e5, and now what you want to do is check okay if you block here you can simply take there if you block there okay you can exchange and then exchange the queens or if not if you take with the pawn then he has a, a bad a pawn structure let's say c3 here and now you just run away with your bishop to c5 and at this point, you have several opportunities. You see, you block him already to castle, short. And yeah, you, you, you are good, you, you have control on the dark square. And yeah, so in this position, if he does 
e5, for example, which is very reasonable, then his weak then his pawn structure start weaken. You can do something like that, offering exchange, and if you exchange, you are doing well, coming here with a knight or here or or there, sorry, and yeah, see his. Uh, um, dark squares are very weak and you are totally fine here, even slightly better. Now let's say he does something like knight d2, then you can do the aggressive move d5. If he doesn't move forward and take, then you have the very uh, dangerous move uh, knight h6. Now you attempt him to go there and do many kind of um, dangerous moves. So you're doing totally fine. You can castle short and remember his king can't castle. So d5, right? Seems very natural to push further, threaten the knight. So it's kind of weird, but you need to go here. Knight e7. And at this point, there are several options. Some of them can be very tricky. Let's start with a trick I use a lot online. Some player plays this one. F4 to push forward and make pressure on this pawn. The evaluation bar is already bad for white. But what you can do is either to take already, okay, and then go here, right? And you can push here and try to make pressure on white. But what I like most, especially in blitz games, is not to take here and rather to take to go here. Now you can see the setup. It's very confusing because either if he takes or move forward, then the queen comes on and threatening the king, right? Let's say he go here, which is very tempting, again to threatening the knight, and then boom, he go here, right? And if he goes here, whoa, bad, very bad move, you're winning on, on the spot, right? Double up. Now, here the best move is, if he goes here, then you also win on the spot. Just take here and then take here or take here with check if he goes here. Then you can take here. As you can see, and then go with a knight. Let's say he go here. Then you can go here and pressure on this. Or or if you if you may otherwise go and check here and take another pawn and look about his king and his pawn structure you already several pawns up and yeah you're winning totally so the best move here is king d2 what you can do is either to take or even better knight f6 and now if he takes the knight here, then you go for a checkmate attack over there, and yeah, you can go back, and if you go there, you can check him here, and yeah, let's say, something like that. Knight c6 check, b5, and <laughs> you see the journey of the king, you should checkmate him somehow. But let's say he doesn't take you and he sees a threatening attack over there, so he protects with his uh, knight. And then you're just pinning this uh, knight with king and now attempting the same, the same thing. And if he takes, then you take with the same idea. And even worse, because now you have also the bishop in the attack. You can see very dangerous attack from black just by one mistake of f4 
This variation with a4 is not good for white and you can punish him right on the spot and it's very likely he will make some mistakes. Let's go back to the main line, which calls, by the way, link Springer variation. Let's say he is not doing f4 and knight f3 instead, threatening the pawn on e5 and then you also go here, protecting the pawn. Now the idea here is to push, to develop your pieces like an Antillian uh, game, you know, bishop to c5 square and then d6. This setup is very strong and solid. Okay, so let's say he's doing something like this. I will cover the uh, theory which is h4 in a couple of minutes, but let's first go very common moves online as most of the players don't know the theory here and they will play logical moves like here. If he goes here, you don't want to do it right away because then he can go... Yeah, you don't want that. Give him tempo. Instead, what you would like to do is pushing the A pawn to protect this spot from the knight and more importantly building a returning port for the bishop here okay so let's say and now he, he does this develop it and you also develop uh, let's say castle now if he goes attempting to threaten your bishop, you're totally fine as you can retreat to a7 square you design already. So, this diagonal is very strong for, for black. You're okay here because you can right away push your pawn and make the bishop either to exchange pieces or to run away to his base. Okay. <clears throat> now, a lot of players at some point will play this this move to, you know, to block your very strong diagonal with the bishop. So you can trade, or you can also move here, or let it as is be, and just exchanging here, and then you have a strong pressure on the d4 square, and that is already protected by the knight. I like in this condition to replace, then he has a bad bone structure and a very weak spot over here. So my main idea is to push the pawn here forward. That they takes. Takes. Then you threaten him go here, and then all of a sudden your rook comes on. I like this setup. So white can do, let's say, queen uh, e1 to protect the g3 spot, and then you can do many things. You can. What I like to do the most is taking away my king from the diagonal of the bishop and it's playable. You have many ideas. Somewhere you can play here. Um, you can move your, your queen to this side. You have a lot of ideas. The same ideas you can use if you go knight c3, okay, it's the same idea. So let's go back to the other possibilities, okay, 
So not knight c3, not knight f3, but not f4, which is bad. Let's say bishop c4. Then again, the same ideas. Now you can move here because you cannot lock your bishop. Now let's go back to the main possibility for white. Yeah, in this position, right? d5, knight retreat to e7, and then knight to f3. Now, before I said like something like this, which something that a lot of players will make against you, but, or this one, But the theory, sorry, the theory says here, move here, the best move for white, and then you block him because we don't want him to push, so you have to close. This time he can block you and threatening the knight, the queen, and then you don't want to go here as I explained earlier, because then you block your bishop. It's a very early stage of the game, and you don't want that. So this time you need to go here. Okay, and then he can go here. And then you have the same idea. Which is solid. And some of the player will play this one. Which is very logical to push to push the C pawn and not to block it with C3, right? And man, or move maneuver also, tango like here. <clears throat> All possible for white. So some player will play this, and here you have a very nice, um, fierce uh, trap for white against white. You just move the same ideas and attacking the bishop when you go back here then you want to do the same thing he does in the king side and then but here you don't block it because you have a nice trap uh, this one well you kind of expose your queen and sacrifice your queen but if you can see further, there is mate in two moves. If he takes here, so let's say he take here, and then boom. Had to go here and then mate, checkmate, nice checkmate. Okay, so this was this is just nice trick, but you know, as tricks is not the main idea of the opening, but as a side note, it's also it's always fun. Now let's analyze a game I played using this approach I taught you in this video. So let's see. E4, knight c6. It was a blitz game, this one. D4, e5 provoking the pawn, d5, maneuvering the knight, tango, position, knight g6, knight c3, bishop c5, all pretty normal, this is the structure, no, but I didn't, you can also do this because the knight can takes here. Well, here I exchange, although he opened up his uh, file for the rook, this is now as a weakness for him. You will see later on. Now this is a setup I like. Exchanging the pawn here and then you have two two knights here. This is my setup using their, the white's uh, weaknesses at g3 and e3, which is very often happen after exchanging the bishop here in e3. So as you can see here, he should have played something like this. He 
should have played something like this, but he didn't. So it's worth. But even if he, he played this, then I can stick with my plan. I don't know. Uh, bishop to, e, to d6, d7, development. I can um, move with this knight to here and then add my rook to the party, okay, in the king side. And yeah, it's very <laughs> unpleasant for, for uh, white, even the valuation bar is with me. And yeah, so let's go, let's keep going. Knight g3. Running from with a with a rook and then coming e4 with the protection of the knight that stays in g3. So yeah, <laughs> look how miserable he becomes in a few seconds. Knight d4 takes takes and now I pin my own knight, uh, threatening to expose it and with check and lots of threatening a lot of options i have here very tactical position for black and i'm totally winning here so he retreats to his base and then i bring the other knight to the party i take here other one he takes here and bringing the rook finally to the open file now the king moves here, and now <laughs> he free is freeing me up the you know the second line. So knight uh, queen going to e e one, and then tactics begin. Knight takes here, knight takes back, and then. Say bye, say goodbye to the queen. Black is totally winning here. And no matter what he does, I'm just winning. Let's see what happens. I even didn't take the knight and I, ah yeah, I did the checkmate. Nice tactic. Um, lots of uh, amateur player will just take the queen, which is okay. He will also win, but if you, in chess you want, especially in blitz chess, you want to uh, win as, as fast as possible. Another possibility in the Lichtspiegel variation is g4. Very interesting move. Uh, again, let's do the analysis mode. So very interesting move g4, provoking me to go g6, and then he will do the the h4 with the two pawns all together supporting each other which is very interesting at the same time he makes a weakness spot here even worse than the usual setup let's see the game itself the normal setup so here as i said he did the h5 plan but i wasn't worried about that and you shouldn't wor worry about that either. You have some compensation for, you know, the bad structure and so on. Here he blundered a pawn. He should have played this. But, you know, still the same idea. You know, went back. And d6. Here I develop my attack in the king side, as you can see now. Yeah. Nice pin pawn. And now I take I already uh, three pawns up. So we kind of losing. You can see the Valbar. And now Yeah. Look here how miserable he is. Check, check, pawn goes forward, rook comes in, maneuvering to check, going back, and 
checkmate in two moves, right? So yeah, this was another interesting case, g4. So remember, g4, some will play that, and as you can see, it's a very strong player compared to my level. I'm somewhere between the 900, 1900 to 2000, he is beyond uh, my level a bit. So, strong player, and you can still beat him with this Nimesovich Link Springer setup. So, let's move on to the next case. Well, another case, interesting case, is d6. I haven't analyzed it before in the board, but now you will see what to do against this move. Okay, so d6 very interesting because you kind of um, pushing me uh, uh, by attacking the knight that I will go here in either way, but by doing so you kind of block block me this pawn from developing this bishop. If you if I'm taking here, then whether he takes or not, he block my bishop. But here I just skip this as it doesn't exist, and then he takes, I take, uh, fairly good here. Now I pin the. Now I prefer this over uh, knight c5. I could have played knight c5, uh, bishop c5 as well, but it's attempting to, because my uh, knight, uh, queen is over here attacking this point, it's very logical to attack, double attack the knight. So, exchanging. And now, it, in this position, I decided to go f6, although I uh, generally want to develop my knight over here. I don't remember why I did it uh, here, but it's also good because it's the position is more open and he is more uh, uh, he has kind of slow development uh, compared to the other lines I showed you. So yeah, now, uh, castle d6. Okay, now I have the open C file, which will happen for you sometimes when he do, uh, does the D6 or other variation. If you do C, uh, C6 and he exchange pawns with this pawn. So remember, this is another opportunity you have in these lines. C file, okay? Making a pressure over there. Now, b5, attacking the knight, and then see the sacrifice. Okay, so he takes, takes, I move to here, and I have a nice decent compensation. Went back, goes here, and then the other knight, remember the two knights, and bringing the, the rooks afterwards, and yeah, the same, you, you got the idea already. So he had to sacrifice back his rook and then f f6. I wanted to maneuver and bring my queen from here to here. Nice idea. And that's what I did. And then ah okay a6 cut off the pawn c4 as you will see later. Okay, a queen h5, c4, rook, bishop, bit complicated game, and then he hang his rook, he didn't see that. But even if he didn't do that, I could have done other things like my idea was g5, g4. Now let's go back to the main d4 line. It's very possible that your opponent would play knight f3 here. 
So this is a scotch setup. Well, what I like to do here in the scotch game, especially in blitz games, is d6, okay? Which is a version of Knights of Each. But if he takes on e5, then you don't want to take back because it raids queens and then you lose your pawn or uh, the possibility to castle with your king. What I like to do here is a gambit that I kind of invented is go with the bishop to here and then lots of flair will want to take here, right? And then you take back with your bishop and then look about this position how you can take advantage of this open file for your rook and castling the queen side. It's become very tricky for white. So let's say he goes here, you go here because we don't want him to enter with the uh, knight to here, and then you could do him, you could do that. So let's say he goes here, then you go here. Now if he castle, then you castle in the queen side. And now because you lost in the gambit to this pawn, now you are threatening to expose an attack on his queen, and it's very dangerous. Now let's say he runs away from this attack, protecting this pawn, then you can either doubling your attack here or starting an attack in the in the king side or even better do something like this and attacking both it this and this and if he runs away then you can take either with your bishop or with your knight I think it's better with a knight and then you go here something like that and look, <laughs> he is so worst here. You're attempting to go here. Wow, I don't want to be white here. So, other possibilities in this variation. After he takes your poison pawn here, then, okay, and then he might do I saw a lot of players play this. Yeah, to to close up the attack on the queen, and then you continue with your idea to castle in the queen side to put your rook in front of the uh, queen and then threaten check if he goes here. Castle, you castle. Some of them will not notice. Yeah, you can on the spot punish him with exposure. Yeah, but many players will do this one, this move. Yeah, but here what I do is castling the queen side. Let's say he noticed this problem and he wants to go here. Yeah, attacking your queen and. A knight, very logical move. Now, look this one. Boom! <laughs> now, if he takes, if he takes with a bishop, then you take with a bishop. And if he takes to attack the queen, then you do check here. And then you will take with check his queen, right? And if you go here, it's so crazy. And now you take in d2, the knight, with check. And if the queen takes back, because his knight is already uh, attacking your queen as well, so... But you still take. And now if he takes back your queen, and he has to, if not, he's down a queen. You take this bishop with check. And going to t take the other p minor piece, the knight on e4. It should not go there because there you take it with check. 
And if you go there, you simply take and after forking the uh, the bishop and the, the the rook over there, simply pin the, the pawn again. And if he goes, then you just take with check. And if he goes to the side, you just go back and you up two pieces. Totally winning. So yeah, crazy. So in this matter, I made uh, a video just about the anti-scotch gambit, as I call it. I think I invented it. I'm not sure about that 100%. Very interesting variation in which you can surprise. And there are lots of tactics to surprise and crush your opponent on the spot. So check this video out if you are interested. Now let's continue uh, with the Knights of each variations. So until now we handled the main response to Knights of each, which is d4. This is attempting and a lot of players will play that against you. Then I recommend e5 and what I explained earlier. However, some players and it is also more recommended by the engine is knight f3. This is a very good response for white. And here you have several options. You can sol consolidate the position and go transpose it to, you know, the traditional e4, e5, knight f3, uh, knight c6, and then Spanish. Italian, you can do Ponziani, the Four Knights, Scotch. So there are a lot of options you can do it, but I will not cover it here. Because if you did Knight at six, I guess you don't want to stick with the traditional opening. So here you have several options. You have the solid um, Knights of each continuation, which is D6. But I want to uh, present you some dangerous opening for black. It is very aggressive option for black. I just would introduce you the basic ideas here and very nice tricks you have in this opening. And if you would want to dive further into this uh, variation, I will link down below a course just about names of which I like very much. Totally recommended of a master that is expert in names of each. So let's say he takes. Then you move on with your uh, pawn. Exposing the attack on the pawn. And here, if there are a lot of options, if you go, I don't know, d4, then you take. If you go knight c3, then you take, and you are very solid. Let's say here, you see, you are very solid. <laughs> you can, you can, uh, if he doesn't do uh, d4, you will uh, conquer the center. So if he does uh, d4, then you can do e6. With the idea of here, and you have the open file for the rooks. Similar idea, you can move your queen and go here and attack the king side. So let's dive into the interesting things, which is protecting the pawn, which can happen to you. This is where things can get tricky. Then you do e5. Now it seems a very bad situation for for black as the queen goes here check it looks like you can't block it because he takes but you will do it anyways counterintuitive huh but wait for a second you'll see you take here and then you go knight f6 <laughs> so complex right tactically you can't take because you take his queen right and if you go back with the queen, you just simply take here this. So, what he would do is check 
exposing Jack and attacking both the bishop and the rook. And then if you take here, then he takes. And however, it's not, it's not that easy for white and it can be very good for black. You take here, d3, then, then you want to protect this pawn to lock the queen by the bishop that the knight is protecting him from here and castling the queen side. So for example, if he just develop his pieces, then you can castling here and if you're just ignoring the situation and you conquer queen in the corner. Terrific. However, we get that he will not ignore the situation. Now let's say that your opponent will take the pawn here. It seems very logical at first glance, right? You are pinning the knight over here. You are freeing your uh, queen from the trapped area. So it seemed logical. However, it's also very dangerous for white and you will see why. Here, what you do is knight d4 in order to attack the rook. Then the queen might go here. Let's check. And then you go here, say he go here, and then you attack with a knight here. Look at the position, <laughs> how bad it looks for white. So what he will do here is run away with his queen to here, right? That will attack over here. And attacking the bishop here. And you protect let's say you want to attack him it can be tricky even more let's say white goes here check check takes here and then it's very tricky for white If you take here, I take you here. If you go here, I go here. And look at the situation. This position, I can go here and attack this. Or here, or move forward. Move my rook here and you are a very bad situation in white. So even worse possibility for white is not going to knight g6 check but trying to attack my knight over here because then I take here and if he takes here I win free queen more possibilities he has is knight c3 and then you can't take here because it's protected. But what you can do is move here and with the idea to cast on the queen side and to attack in the queen in the king side because it's all open for you because all the pawns are gone, right? So let's say you go here, attacking here, and then you again take here. And then if he castle, he does d3, then you can make this a surprising move, because if he takes, then check, and you have a big advantage here. Now let's see one of my games against strong player, you see 1980 rating and the rapid chess. I crush this opponent with the Colorado Gambit. So I want to show you other possibilities I didn't cover in my analysis. So yeah, let's get started. He chose to take 
and to protect the pawn. Remember all the mess. Let's begin. Queen, queen check takes. Queen is f6. G, g7 takes. Queen takes. Now, one of the moves is here, as I showed you the variations. Another move is here, and then you protect the pawn over here. But he did something else. Wait, okay. He did uh, bishop to e2. And then I made this, okay. Knight to f4. Now he done this, done this one. And yeah, he totally lost after I take here. The <clears throat> knight is joining. And now, I don't know if the best move, but this is very strong move. I could also uh, make this move maybe. This is also crushing. I threaten in two sides. Look at the tactics here. I like tactics. So yeah, check. Then bishop e6, development, want to castle in the queen side, and then bishop d6. Stay in the position here. I'm not concerned about it. Developing my pieces, and then castling the queen size. Now, queen e3, and now I'm bringing the rook into the game, attacking the king side, and then, boom. Here I missed a mating two, very beautiful mating two. So please hold on your YouTube video, press the pause, and let's see if you can find it. Mate in two. So instead of just taking the queen, I could have played Rook g1 double check. He can't take it with the rook because I also checking him with a bishop. He can't move because of the uh, knight here. If he take here, then mate. But I missed that. What I did is this one, this move, which is also winning. He moves back his rook. I made bishop c5 and then kind of another variation for that double check and he lost he resigned so as you can see there are so many options and tricks that are very aggressive and dangerous for white I didn't cover every one of them but yeah you can try it yourself and if you understand the principles it will make you a huge advantage in blitz games so i hope you enjoyed the video it's a very effective and surprising opening for black you will be surprised how much you can win with this opening and that just few players actually know what to do here in these setups they will think more which is a big advantage by its own sake and they not necessarily find the right moves. So, of course, there are more um, options and more variations within this uh, Knights of each move. Therefore, I will link here down below in the description a link to a very recommended course. It will cost you just uh, 20 bucks, something like this. A recommended course that cover way more thoroughly than I did with solid theory and tricks. All you want to find about names of each for black is there and some bonuses on top of the names of each tango maneuver. So check it out. It's made by a very known master that he's expert in this opening. So check it out. The link to the course is affiliate link. So it's another way to support me on the way. You will get the course and support the channel for more videos like this. Thank you if you do that. On top of this opening, uh, I already made uh, another surprising weird opening for white with E4 advanced uh, Italian setup. It's called Jerome Gambit. 
very effective for blitz and bullet chess online so you can check it out here subscribe to this channel because i will make more chess videos not a lot of chess videos because channel in general is about self-improvement, entrepreneurship, self-discovery, how to become a YouTuber and blogger. So if you are interested in that, obviously subscribe right now. But I will make once in a while chess videos, me playing chess online and explaining the moves. And another opening in black against the Queen Gambit. So stay tuned. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Comment in the comment section below if you have any question about the opening. So please comment below. I want to hear you. And we'll see each other in the next video. Ciao.